Well, for the first time in several weeks, I'm down here with the Rover 2000. It's the first time I've sort of ventured down here with the easing of restrictions on what we can and can't do. This is my job, so I'm gonna do some mechanical work on this car, fitting these engine mounts, trying to get these in shot in a weird position, which have been sat on my desk for literally months because the engine mounts on this car have actually collapsed at the moment, meaning that I can't start the car because it grinds the front uh, crank pulley into the cross member of the car when you turn the engine over. So this is a significant thing which has been stopping me to move the car anywhere. But over winter time I wasn't gonna drive it anyway during the salt, so it didn't get done. And I've been shoved in this garage slightly, well, I say slightly away from home, it's literally a few hundred yards away from home, but it means I've got to load the car up with all my tools. Things Proud to be sponsored by Diamond Bright, the car care products that have been keeping the furious fleet looking their best for a long time already. To find all you need to keep your car clean and protected, follow the link below to diamondbright.co.uk. It's the first time I've opened this door in a little while. Oh, the smell of this thing is amazing. The carpet, the leather, oh, it's just a time capsule of a different world. Let's roll this thing back a wee bit so I can get to the front. So this is the Rover 2000 and its engine, and these are the new engine mounts, and these are the new engine mount bolts. Now these look significantly different to the old ones that are collapsing in there, which look like little flat donuts, and these are big chunky things, so I'm gonna figure out how this all goes together in a moment. Hopefully it won't be too hard, because all of in theory, all I need to do is using the big jack and some lumps of wood to spread the load, jack the engine very carefully from underneath. Now I have done this before changing the engine side plates, so I know it can be done without damaging the stump. And take out the old ones, bolt in the new ones. It's, well, three bolts each side, so six bolts. I mean, how long can this take? I mean, literally, I'm gonna say 10 minutes probably. What could go wrong? Let's find out. So looking through there, I don't know if you can see that shadowy little uh, bolt that is that's the equivalent of that just there so I need to remove this air filter and I can get access to that this one is also dark and shadowy let's undo everything first before I start jacking stuff up that's probably the best thing to do then aside here is the uh, Sinclair C5 which some people have never seen or knew that I had um, it's got no running gear in it whatsoever it belonged to a company called Hilliards in London who if you can just about make that out were an Alfa Romeo dealer in the 1980s. And this was a courtesy vehicle, which no one liked. So that's why it's got no gubbins in it. So that's the project waiting to happen. It needs everything from tires, brakes, steering, and then all the motive power. It's got the controllers still on it, but they're not connected to anything. You can just hear the little micro switch for accelerate. And it's got bicycle brakes on it. How scary is that? Well, the first challenge has been figuring out what size the bolts are, um, because it's quite hard to access them. So let's try and undo the first one, well, of what will be these. Oh dear, that's 9 16 in the top, so let's try and figure out what it is in the bottom. It looks like a long 15 millimeter, we'll get the bottom one undone. Let's see how we go. I'm doing or not. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. Well, that's annoying. Working on the theory that if I can't get the first one off, I'll try a different one and see how that goes instead. Going on one of the awkward side mounting bolts. Which seems to have a half inch. There we go. Oh, it's the washer, one of the bolters. I'm guessing the bolt's on the floor now. At least something's out. Right, so I'm another go at getting the uh, other side off. Which is actually really quite hard to see. I can't give you any video of this because I can't I can barely see it with my own eyes, I'm getting a camera down to it. Well, this thing is a godsend on this job. I managed not to drop the half inch nut this time, which is good. Hmm, that's greasy. All I need to do now, oops, is figure out that one big bolt which goes into the top 
of the engine mount because it's a captive nut on the bottom and it doesn't seem to be wanting to come free. Let's put these somewhere safe. On the trolley jack, don't let me forget that. Right, let's do the other side first. We'll, we'll figure this out. Let's do those two bolts on this side as well. And the air filter needs to come off first of all because you can't even see past it, never mind if you get a spanner past it. Oh, come on, you son of a son. That's well tight, as they say. Jack, damn it, come on, get off there. better view now of the, uh, the engine mount and these are the two small bolts so that's one of the two small bolts I just managed to undo on the other side so hopefully I can whip that out in no time with this one but I think I may even need to take the carburetor off which is annoying. There we go so the air filter is off giving me a lot more access only two bolts. I wish I got a new filter element for this now because that's pretty grim actually it's well overdue a change. It's a half inch on the bottom Way done. Easy. I might even go as far as say peasy. Complete with the washer. Excellent. Uh, this is slightly more awkward because I'm right by the starter motor. Okay, this one doesn't want to come off so much. Oh, this is not proving easy at all. Oh. Let's try the other half inch socket. I've got to drive home like this. So I'll get this underneath there. Hopefully I can get enough of an angle onto it. So there we go. Get that up onto there. Brilliant. I think I'm done. That one bolt was a different size to the others. It looked the same down here in the dark, but it wasn't actually the same size. Ah, oh, get the static socket back on the bottom again without shorting on the starter motor again. Bit catching on the exhaust pipe. It's catching on the starter motor cables. There we go. There we go. Oh no, it's not done. Why don't you undo your so and so? There's literally no reason why they shouldn't be undoing. There we go, you're out. Finally. That one was a pain to undo. Now I can't get the socket wrench back out. There we go. Thank you. Huh, right, now I just to go and figure out what size bolts those ones are, because that's a really big random size with something random on the bottom as well. Well, this one, it turns out, is 19 millimeters top and bottom on the big bolt. So this is a bit of a weird angle to try and push past the carburetor, but I'll see if I can do this without having to go home or take the carburetor off, which I really prefer not to do. 19 mil on the bottom. Let's check the 19 mil on top and see what happens. It's out. I love this tool so much. Now one little issue, which I hadn't previously been aware of, this bolt is slightly longer than the access to remove it. So and that's going to remain static, that's not going to change once I've lifted the engine up. Hmm. So I can either take the carburetor off or go and get an angle grinder. But there's no power right here, so I can't run an angle grinder. So I've got to take the carburetor off. That's going through, if you can see it's with my hands in the way. 
that's the engine mount which comes off the side of the block. So when I lift the engine up in a second, that's going to remain static in terms of position against the bottom of the carburetor just there, which it will not come past. So these have got to come undone. A little trick with these P6SU carburetors is the top um, right, I guess you call it, bolt, you have to unloosen off and then shuffle the carburetor forward away from the engine before you can actually uh, remove it. Otherwise it snags. Oh, there's a spring on that. Return spring. Oh, dear me. I'll leave that connected. Right, that one is out. Blimey, that is a hell of a bolt. That's annoying. This bolt does not want to screw back into the nut that it came with, and the nut is stuck in this 19 mil. To hit it with something. As I said, don't like doing stuff out here because I haven't got any tools to fix stuff with. Hang on. There you go, fixed. Now back to this one, which is causing me grief. It's a much smaller bolt, to be honest. Let's try and figure this one out. Well, this one seems to be a 9 16 on the top, but I've only got one 9 16 so I'll have to go with a 15 mil on the bottom, and hopefully that will be enough to well, do the business here. It's also kind of awkward because the fuel pump is on the front, and the oil filter is above it, and the dipstick is behind it, so getting underneath it is kind of tricky. And from above, I've got the hydraulic cable for the clutch um, slave, which is very much in the way as well. So everything is not awesome. Everything's not awesome. This kind of sucks in an annoying way. It's turning. Does that come off or not? No. It might have come off. Oops. No, it's just loosened in an annoying manner. Okay. The problem with working out here in the lockup, which I really hate doing and trying to avoid doing at all costs, is that if I'm missing one tool, I'm completely stuffed. I mean, there should be a 16 millimeter long reach one of these things over in my uh, socket set on the floor, but I've got two 15s for some reason, and no 16. Uh, I've got had to drive back home. Luckily, Jace turned up. He'd just been to the shop and walked past because this is always passing traffic of people, and often I know who they are. He guarded the garage while I ran back home, got a bunch more sockets. Oh, damn, that's not as loose as I thought it was. Ah, that's a smaller size. Lucky I brought a smaller size wrench because I nearly didn't. Phew. Oh, come on, is that 916 gripping or not? Why aren't you gripping? Because you were gripping a second ago, you tore up my hands. Are you undone or not? You're just spinning and threatening. When I put the 916th on there, it grips. I can turn. When I try and spin it with the impact, it doesn't do anything. Oh god, I've just lost the um, socket inside the chassis rail. That's annoying. Oh god, how do you get this thing out? Brilliant. Let's try the next size down. No, that's too small. It was the 916th, so why is it not turning? is maddening. Maddening, I tell you. I managed to get my finger jammed in the end of it and remove it that way. What a pain. Right, so give us one more try. I'm really am baffled why this won't work because it is linking on the clicking. I can feel it engaging. Hang on, let me put this. No, it's, no actually it's not. It's not quite engaging on there. It feels like it is engaging, but it's not. I've got the ratchet on there. It's not quite clicking on there. So I need a 16 millimeter. Damn it, and I don't have a 16 millimeter. Well, that's just insanely annoying. But since I'm here, and I've got a jack, and I've got an impact wrench, and I've got the four wheels with summer tires on them, just there behind the camera, I may as well stick them on the Mercedes because that's parked outside as well, because I used it to bring all the tools over. So the day won't be wasted at least. While I go and mail order, because all the shops are still shut, a 16 millimeter long reach socket. Bother. Right, this saga has been ongoing for about three or four days now, possibly even longer, I'm losing track of time. But I've been back and forth and back and forth finding every single possibility um, 
of 16 millimeter equivalent imperial sizes box spanners spark plug spanners and i'm just fed up of it so now today i'm going to get medieval on its ass um, a big drill 10 millimeter uh, metal bit got an angle grinder it's hard to reach in there but i'll see what i can get down there uh, a friend of mine lives just across the road from his garage so i'm going to string an extension lead through his window across the street up into the lockup and power this to death um, it's quite a tight access. I'm not quite sure which one's going to work. Meantime, some good bit of news. I was buying some more bits for the uh, V8, and I've now got a new HT King lead because I stole this for the Volvo when well, that one broke, and a new air filter. So those can go on a little bit later on. Right, first of all, let's try and figure out which, if anything, let's try and figure out if either of these devices will actually fit down into my, my first choice would be the grinder but I don't think I can actually get the device into that hole oh hang on I'm tangled that's not a good start look at me do fine precise work with this cutting edge from the middle ages and I can't even get it off the firewall oh hang on this isn't actually mm. I've also got to be super cautious because the uh, hydraulic lead for the um, uh, the clutch is down there as well. Now I can't actually seem to manoeuvre this down into position. Or can I? Yes I can just about. Oh that's careful. Oh that's going to cut my fingers up. Okay that can just about be done and probably won't cut the dipstick off at the same time either. Or we can try it with the drill and see if that one does any better. Mm. Yeah, it's going to have to be the drill. So I've now taken this down to basically the washer and a shim of metal which doesn't seem to, well, seems to kind of weld itself all together to the washer now. So I'm going to have to go home and find a big hammer and one I'm going to call a suitable drift so I can bash that out of there. Because it's all quite hot under there I've left a pair of pliers and a big leather glove uh, stopping the um, clutch slave, well the clutch pipe hydraulic line from melting against it. It did get a tiny bit warmer actually and I've spoiled the surface of it unfortunately. But right, hammer time. And the biggest hammer I could find. Hooray! It's, no, it slipped. I thought it was done. Uh, damn. Damn it, that ain't budging an inch. Just not budging a little bit even. Well, finally got to the point where I've milled the uh, top of the bolt off. There we go. I think I might finally have broken this off. On, you so, so I don't know how this is kind of welded in place so hard. Come on. Yes. So now the bolt, I think, is free. Can I do it? I pop the camera in place. Yep. Yeah, get the hammer on this. I'm free, you sod. Yes. Goodbye, you pain in the arse. That's two weeks of trouble you've given me. There we have it. This is the bugger that took me two weeks to mill out because that old bolt was just rounded off. I thought it was a 16 mil, but it wasn't. It was probably a 15 that got rounded out. You little sod. That's cost me two, maybe even three weeks of, of drilling and grinding. Finally out. I can get these engine mounts in and drive the car again at last. Oh. Okay, this bit's my fault. Some point between 
July and now, I managed to lose some of the footage of this project because for two weeks, I went out every night with this cordless drill and a fully charged, a fully charged battery and a big drill bit. And I drilled that bolt until the battery went flat. And I came home and charged it and the next day I did it again. And it took two solid weeks of just drilling the top of that bolt for it to finally give up. And then I was able to take it out. One engine mount out of the way. Now I can pull out the old, sorry, well that's the engine mount, well, bracket, that's the engine mount itself, that's the old one. Aha, right. So this just falls, I really hope it does, just falls into this hole. Oops. I say just falls into the hole, it now sits somewhere on top of the hole and doesn't want to go in. And I also lost a bit of footage where I discovered that the reason that new engine mount wouldn't go in is because they're not actually for P6s, they're from something else and they've been kind of adapted to fit into our cars. Unfortunately they are ever so slightly too large and you're supposed to file the, the hole, the opening that the engine mount sits in to make them fit. So I've got a hand tool, because I've got no power over there, so I've got a hand tool and tried filing it, but it made no difference. It didn't even dent it. So I spoke to someone else who sells them, but they couldn't guarantee that the left and right ones were gonna fit because uh, there are sometimes differences in the chassis of the car. And again, there's supply difficulties getting these things, which is why I've now settled on a different route. Right, now I don't actually remember what the last thing I said was because this video has taken quite a long time to make. I think I may have said earlier on in this recording uh, that I didn't want to do like half a thing and come back to it. I wanted to do all of it in one video so it's not coming and going, stopping, starting, an incomplete job. But that does mean it's taken absolutely months because of everything you've just seen in the last few minutes. Right, now I'm now going to take a leaf out of the Drifters book. That is the people who drive sideways, not the Motown band. These are not comedy glasses items. These are not massive pills which need to be taken before lunch. These are hockey pucks. They are actually, despite being incredibly hard, rubber. And what the guys in the drift fraternity do is replace their engine mounts with hockey pucks because they're oil, heat, petrol retardant. And they've made a very, very, very tough rubber indeed. So, you know, they've got just a little tiny bit of give, but not enough that's gonna give you vibrations through the car. And what I can do here is use them in addition to my existing original engine mounts, where the rubber part has collapsed on my old ones, I can then put these on top to make up the space. And because they're rubber, they'll have a nice bit of vibration reduction ability. And the best part of this is they're only three pounds each. So even if it's a disaster, it's not cost the, the earth. So all I need to do is drill a hole in the middle Oops. Ah, I've got too much stuff in here. Uh, like... This garage is a lot tidier since one of my V8s went back into that car, but it's still hub nutty in terms of its disorganisation. Right. I think my battery's going flat. It still smells utterly revolting. a lot of mess. I'm glad I'm not building an engine underneath there anymore. So we now have a fairly tidy hole through there. Just need to do the other one. I'm going to stick that in the car. Right, I'm aware it's kind of dingy in here, but hopefully this is the final leg, the last stand of doing this. I can't move the car back any further because the engine is supported on a jack um, and it's not much room to work around here because I've got most of the interior from a uh, pre-production or early production R50 Mini. If anyone would like a uh, red interior for an R50 Mini, then drop me a line, because um, it could do with getting it gone. But you know, it's not going cheap, I know what I got. 400 pounds, no, 50 quid, it's out of here. Uh, let me know if you'd like one, because it's very much in the way. Looking at the photo I took a while ago of these new mounts compared with the old ones, this is about the difference. The thing is, because I've done the entire hockey puck as one, if it's too high, I can take it out and shave it a bit lower. I don't know if they're gonna compress or not when I put the, uh, the weight of the engine on. I don't think they will. But uh, if I cut them in half to start with, you can't go back, can you? Measure twice, cut once and all that. Which is not what I normally do. Oop, that's them, oop, in, ha ha. Right, the engine is now raised up, raised up. Ah, me talk, good English. Ah, right, oh God, 
Not easy, not easy at all. Okay. Now the engine has moved backwards on the jack as I lifted it, so hopefully it'll fall forward far enough that I can line the bolts up. Well, that one's lined up. I can put that one through. If I could find it. One, ha, ha, ha. Okay, that's done. Now then, how are we gonna shift the engine forwards? Oh God. Oh, I wish I thought of this. Actually, it does look like it's sitting a little high, to be honest. Uh, but still, a little high is better than a little low. That's a problem. I need a longer bolt. That's somewhat irksome, one might say. Bother, one might also say. Well, I'll use this one to peg it in place, if nothing else. Whoops. The other thing I need to do is to bolt the engine mounts back to the car because I'm bolted them first of all and I wish I'd lined them up when the engine was still on the jack. Well okay so it's not a 100% perfect solution but is it ever on this channel? Well that's sort of done. The bolts aren't long enough. I need to get some longer bolts and the one on this side isn't quite lining up properly. Um, really what I need to do is get it home and then I've got access to more tools and I can actually do stuff better than here where I'm sort of stuck working around car seats. And as this car is technically MOT exempt, I could, in fact technically it actually is, I could drive it around home legally, it's only around the corner, and uh, get it home and finish it there. I think I will do that now. But I haven't heard this car start in absolutely months. Um, I need to find some longer bolts from the bolt warehouse place down the road, assuming I can get there before this lockdown, which is gonna be day after tomorrow when I'm filming this. Uh, I might, well I'll see how it goes, I might actually take those hockey pucks out again, shave like five millimeters or so off them just to make the engine sit a tiny bit flatter, but if it's working, it's working. I might just leave it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, unfortunately, I can't turn it over because the battery is stone dead and I brought a jump start pack down with me and that didn't want to do anything, so I need to take the battery home and give it an overnight charge to, to boost it up some more. But hey, the Rover 2000 potentially will be driving before the end of the year which will be nice. Let's sit in the car a second, because I haven't sat in this car in a long time. Oh. oh, these seats are so comfortable. Right, so thank you for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this. I'm, this is a weird video, which I'm not completely happy with because it took so long mistakes were made, as they say, largely by me. In fact, entirely by me. Uh, never mind. Um, at least the car is now in a position where I can probably take it for a drive again very soon, because I would like that very much indeed. It's been too long not taking this car for a drive, as it is my total ultimate favourite. Oh, I've just found my USB adapter, because I've got one that's broken in the, in the Tomcat and the Volvo. Um, I need to buy a few more of these, because I've got several, and mostly they've broken. I don't need it anymore in this car anymore, because it's now got a USB thingy in the Alpine, so I can go and use this in a different car. That was a lucky find. Right, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Rovers, more Retros, all that other kind of stuff. And hopefully I'll see you again in another video very soon indeed. In fact, lots more videos very soon indeed, if we're getting locked down. Take care, everyone.